Estou aqui com os seus Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the crown season for Princess Diana fashion, fact or fiction. Fashion is such an integral part of Diana's journey. She goes from being a very normal girl with, you know, very average, I think, taste in clothes. Princess Diana in a strapless lilac chiffon gown printed with gold pattern receiving the attention. It wasn't a difficult decision in the end. That's what I wanted. That's what I want. For this list, we'll be looking at the accuracy of Diana's outfits in the show, such as whether they were worn during the right events or were indicative of her style during the different periods of her life. What was your favorite Princess Diana fashion moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Yellow Overalls Before becoming a world-renowned fashionista, Diana's outfits were not what one might consider chic. I'm sorry, we haven't missed. We have. I was in costume at the time. The yellow overalls look Diana wears during a pivotal conversation between her and Prince Charles during the badminton horse trials is inspired by an outfit she often wore in the summer of 1981. Emma Corrin, who plays the princess, called her early outfits, quote, awful, but also said that it was important to remind audiences that Diana was just an inexperienced young girl who was thrown in the deep end. It must all be unimaginably awful. Thank you. It's not unusual for our fashion style to develop as we mature, and we certainly get a sense of that here. I just wanted to say you're very much in my thoughts. All our thoughts. Sir. Number 9. The Tux Dress Princess Di wore this stunning backless bottle green dress during her photo shoot with Mario Testino in 1992, the same year she and her husband separated. While the dress was designed as royal dinner wear, its purpose in the final episode is starkly different. Wearing black in the royal family is a huge faux pas unless it's while mourning. And yet, Diana poses for a Christmas family photo in a gorgeous black dress that would be considered risque anyway by royal standards. Only people in mourning wear black. I suggest but I'm not part of your family yet. Black to me was the smartest color you could possibly have at the age of 19. It was a real grown up dress. Costume designer Amy Roberts describes this move as, quote, a moment where she starts putting on armor and fighting for survival in the royal family. I've discovered recently how fashion can be like such a mode of expression and such a voice, in some senses, such an armor. Number eight, the pink gingham pants and hot pink sweater. In 1986, Princess Diana was photographed wearing this outfit outside Highgrove House, the home she shared with Prince Charles and their two sons. In episode three, we see Diana roller skating through Buckingham Palace in a very similar ensemble. While Diana's look showed her confidence through her bold color choices, the crown's designer seemed to opt for lighter tones, perhaps to indicate her youthfulness and inexperience. Roller skating through the halls of Buckingham Palace, Corin's Diana wears similar checkered pants and a magenta sweater. In both instances, we're reminded that it's Diana's earthiness and relatable off-duty clothing choices that helped cement her reputation as the people's princess. Number 7. The Catherine Walker Gown Crowds out in force tonight outside the Royal Opera House to welcome their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Wales. Catherine Walker was the princess's go-to designer and is actually behind several of the outfit inspirations on this list. If you look at Diana's strapless chiffon dress and matching scarf from the 1987 Cannes Film Festival, you might spot where it's been alluded to in episode 9. The Prince, of course, is the president of the Friends of Covent Garden who are hosting tonight's event. Princess Diana in a strapless lilac chiffon gown printed with gold pattern receiving the attention. As the Prince and Princess of Wales enter the Royal Opera House to mark the occasion of Charles's birthday, the cut and material of Diana's dress is almost identical, although the pattern is drastically different. We see a young and shy Diana dressed to impress as she starts to find her feet under the spotlight. Tomorrow, the newspapers will be about nothing other than you. Number six, Diana's sweater collection. Has it been awful? I want a tour, sir. It's been heavenly. No one has ever said that after their first visit to this place. But it has been. Despite having worn some of the most glamorous outfits imaginable, Diana's off-duty sweater collection garnered a reputation of its own. The show sourced material through vintage shops, antique fairs, and costume hire houses to pay homage to Diana's fashion staple. Let me know if I passed. 
I'm sure you have. The distinction. Two sweaters in particular that they replicate to a T are the bold pink number with the llama motifs and the incredibly recognizable and still hugely popular black sheep sweater, with which she was completely besotted. If anyone was going to be able to take casual knitwear and turn it into a worldwide talking point, it could only be Princess Di. Number 5. The Stunning Embroidered Down in New York Diana's solo trip to New York in 1989 was her opportunity to show that she was so much more than a clothes horse, as the American media had branded her. It was a monumental visit, but as she attends the Royal Gala at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, she proves that fashion sense and compassion are not mutually exclusive. Roberts decided to replicate this white, floor-length embroidered gown and matching stole from her iconic trip. This look juxtaposes the glitz and glamour of the fairy tale princess with the reality of the unhappy, scared, and lonely young woman who's wearing it. Number 4. The Australia and New Zealand Tour Using 17 different costumes, the episode explores a time in Diana's life where she's restrained by protocol, but starting to find her own sense of fashion. During this trip, she also discovers how loved she is outside of the royal family, and her confidence begins to show. The show pays tribute to Diana's wardrobe while on tour with incredible accuracy. Whether she's climbing Uluru, visiting the Sydney Opera House, or meeting the Australian Prime Minister. Even her outfit while on a casual family picnic is instantly recognizable. While she was out stealing countless hearts, her outfits continued to steal the spotlight. That's the thing about ladies, you never quite know what they get up to when your back's turned. <laughs> Amazing what ladies do when your back's turned. <laughs> Number 3. The Blue Silver Silk Dress Can't take my eyes off of you You'd be like heaven to touch Among those 17 costumes, there is one gown in particular that marks an important moment for the princess and her fictional counterpart. As she dances with Prince Charles in Sydney, her blue and silver dress is emblematic of the happy fairy tale that everyone believed they were living. In The Crown, this moment marks genuine happiness, and two people who seem utterly in love. It's really good news, so yeah. While normally her bold outfits mask her true feelings, in this moment, however brief it might have lasted, Diana is living the fairy tale that all the outsiders thought was real. Number 2. Her Engagement Dress Ahead of their engagement announcement in 1981, Lady Diana visited the high-end Belleville Sassoon in a last-minute rush for the perfect outfit. Supposedly, the shop assistant didn't recognize her and suggested she go somewhere more budget-friendly. She ended up finding the now instantly recognizable outfit off the rack at the world-famous Harrods. And I suppose in love. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. It's, <laughs> it's such a well-documented moment that it only makes sense that the crown would replicate it. Both look very much in love. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Whatever in love means. Her choice blue skirt suit and necktie were considered powerful statements in the 80s. Maybe this was indicative of the force Diana would become, even if she hadn't realized it yet. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Tartan Long Jacket Diana did wear a similar overcoat, though during her trip to France in 1988. Her One Shoulder Dress While she did wear a similar cut, the design was totally different. Her spring vest and skirt combo we can totally see where they got the inspiration. Alice, one of them also performing the role of deputy master of the household. Her burgundy sweater with white shirt and ribbon. This look for the newly engaged Diana is spot on. Oh, I'll be fine. Locked up in a palace on my own. It's not for long. Six weeks. Oh, it'll fly by. I doubt it. Anyway, I'll see you at the altar. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
you have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Her Iconic Wedding Dress While Diana's wedding rehearsal dress is impressively accurate, the designers had no intention of creating an exact copy of her iconic wedding dress. I realize I take it on an enormous row. I had no idea what I was going into. 750 million people around the world watched the wedding, so some accuracy was required. But ultimately, they wanted to evoke the memories of the first time the dress was revealed. The eyes of the world were on her, and she knew it. They consulted with David Emanuel, one of the original dress's designers, and even had the son of the actual lace maker recreate those elements too. As we watch Emma Corrin walk away from the camera in that dress and veil, we could almost believe it's 1981 and we're actually watching Princess Die. But fairy tales usually end at this point with the simple phrase, they lived happily ever after. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.